Hey, I'm Vic Vucic. I'm the Associate Program Officer of the Hewlett Foundation in Open Educational Resources. What I see is a lot of the potential with mobile learning. Um, I'm seeing kind of three areas get a lot of traction right now. Um, the first is the mobile phone as a data capture device for, uh, for students. So you have the camera, which is very powerful. They're getting very high quality as well as video and audio. And this gives the ability for the student to be outside of the classroom and capture things and put them maybe in a mobile blog or in a central area and share them with the classroom. So rather than just sitting at a desk in the school looking at pictures on the internet, they can actually reflect on their learning while they're outside of school um, and you can give assignments like that. So that's a, that's a great area where we're seeing a lot of, uh, lot of potential. Um, one example was a project I did in Africa where we ran the class in three locations in Africa and at Stanford University and it was on environmental issues and the students captured photos and videos of environmental issues from each of their contexts. So Stanford had the problem where all students had cars and traffic and, and how do you manage that? Whereas in Africa, the nearby nature reserve had dead animals from poaching, and very different, um, very different issues. But then they also had the same recycling systems and things like that. So it was really interesting to see those dynamics. And they shared it all on, on the mobile blog. The second area that I see is um, formative assessment. And this is actually getting a lot of traction in early education, especially where kids are getting these little mobile devices, eventually these will just be iPhones or normal devices, and they can either play games or go through reading exercises, and the device captures, or the program actually captures all the data, and then it syncs up, and the teacher gets a report of where all the students struggled and where they should focus, and this happens um, all very rapidly. Eventually this will be on, again, cell phones, and the program can be run on any sort of platform. Um, the last area is, uh, is around SMS. This is where kids are obviously SMSing everywhere all the time, and it's, I find it kind of sad, then what do we do is we take away their cell phones in, in the school, and we take away one of their main forms of communication. So how, what are ways that we can do projects where kids can SMS with each other, and they're group challenges where they have to go and solve some problems around the school or around the community, and they communicate, and, um, and that's one of the main ways that I think we can really engage them. Um, and then you can do mobile games where you can actually ping students when they're outside. I had one game where it was about financial literacy and teaching kids how to think about money. Well, you know what, they don't think about money and write budgets every time they have to make a decision. So we ping them with SMS questions about three, four times a day asking for financial advice. And it's just like if you're walking down the street and you see a sale and you have to make a decision whether you're going to buy that TV or not or whether you're going to take this credit card offer or not because I get those randomly through the day. So it's a really rich simulation of what it's more like in the real world.